So, let's start then. So, my screen is visible to you. It's coming now? Okay. So, uh, today our topic is artificial intelligence and its applications. And myself, Dipyajati Bora, and I am a faculty in the School of Computing Science, Assam Kajiranga University. Okay, so the main motive of this lecture to talk about artificial intelligence, its introduction, and the emerging applications of AI. Well, so first I will go through the introduction part, then I will come to the application part. The main agenda of this lecture will be, these are the outlines, will be these outlines. First, I'll talk about introduction to AI. Second, I'll talk about the goals of AI. The third, what comprises to artificial intelligence? Means those different subjects or different disciplines by which we compose this AI. Then, one important fact that is programming with and without AI. Then, I come to the types of artificial intelligence. There, I will discuss about type 1 and type 2 and its different types. Then, I will come to the different applications of AI. And finally, I'll conclude the lecture with the, by talking about the advantages and disadvantages of this artificial intelligence. Clear? Well, then let's start. So, first, definition of AI. I hope some of you are already aware with John McCarthy. Yes or no? But guys, uh, please be interactive whenever some. Um, may, uh, maybe I ask you some questions, then please respond with yes or no, because otherwise I'll feel like I'm talking to myself. Okay. So, okay. So, according to John McCarthy, and let me tell you, he is the father of artificial intelligence, because John McCarthy, for the first time, coined the term artificial intelligence. So that's why he is known as the father of artificial intelligence. And according to him, artificial intelligence is the science and engineering of making intelligent machines, especially intelligent computer programs. So this is the way of making a computer or computer controlled robot or the software think intelligent. And in my presentation, you'll see some text I'm putting in bold. This means those are very important. So here I'm focusing on intelligence. So this intelligence is same way, the sim in the similar manner, like the intelligence humans think. Clear? So this is the definition of AI. So he is the person, John McCarthy. Uh, uh, 1955, he has developed the phrase artificial intelligence and for popularity in 1956. And in 1960, he has implemented the first LISPS, and LISPS is LISP processor, where, you know, we use data structure, link, in, <coughs> link data structure, link list data structure, okay. So then in 1971, he got the Turing Award, and this time Turing, don't worry, I'll discuss about it. And in 2001, 
He became the professor and writers of computer science at Stanford University. This is the brief introduction of John McCarthy, and he's a very important person because he is known as the father of artificial intelligence. Clear? Now, when you notice this term, artificial intelligence, this is composed of actually two words, artificial and intelligence. And we all know that artificial means what? Man-made, of course, that those which is not inborn. And intelligence defined thinking power. The ability of uh, thinking. Okay, so when we combine these two words, artificial and intelligence, we'll get the phrase artificial intelligence. Hence, we can say that AI means actually a man made thinking power. Clear? So, AI can be defined as a branch of computer science by which we can create intelligent machines which can behave like a human, think like humans and able to make decisions like we humans. So this is the definition of AI. Now if this definition is clear, I'm moving to the next thing, that is next question is why artificial intelligence is needed. Obviously there should exist some reasons why we need to develop AI-based systems. Some main reasons are because you know with the help of AI you can create some softwares on some devices which can solve real world problems very easily and with accuracy these two words are very important easily and accurate so we also solve a problem but that problem may be complicated or that may be uh, complex for us so we may take more time to solve that but with AI-based machines, we can solve that problem easily and with more accuracy. So that's why this AI is being used in different uh, areas like health sciences, marketing, graphics. Okay. Then next thing, with the help of AI, you can create your personal virtual assistants. I know you all are aware with Cortana, Google Assistant, Siri. Okay. So these are actually virtual assistant. These are AI-based virtual assistants. And virtual assistant means you all know that you can search or you can ask some questions. Okay, suppose you want to know that uh, where is that particular folder, say song folder in your system, then it can automatically give you the answer, give you the part where that folder is. So this is a simple example. So these are the virtual assistants. That those are AI based. Then, with the help of AI, you can build robots which can work in an environment where survival of humans can be at risk. And as per my point of view, this is most important application of AI. Let me tell you why. Just consider one scenario. You know, bomb diffusion. A human being, a hum a person. Okay. Who is doing this tax actually is at high risk. Unfortunate, in some unfortunate cases, he may not be able to defuse the bomb and so he might get killed. So this is a very risky environment and there, if we employ robots to do the same tax, then that risk factor can be what? Vanished, isn't it? So that's why I think that this is one of the most important applications of artificial intelligence. And also, AI opens a path for other new technologies, new devices, new opportunities. So these are the main reasons why we need artificial intelligence. Clear? Now, goals of AI. Basically, I'm citing here two important goals. First, to create expert systems. Then, obviously, you know that uh, one question comes to your mind, what is expert system? From the term expert itself means what? I, we call you as a, suppose, Python expert. Only when you know how to design or how to develop a Python program to solve a complicated task, isn't it? So similarly, expert systems are those systems which exhibit intelligent behavior, 
learn, demonstrate, explain, and advise its users. And to create expertise then is the first goal of AI. Second, to implement human intelligence in machines, that is to create system that can understand, think, learn, and behave like humans is the second goal of AI. I hope this Two goals are clear to you, and my voice is coming to you clearly, isn't it? Because I got some uh, messages from, from Yumit Kumar that voice is breaking. Is it clear now? Yes, sir. Okay. So next thing is that what comprises to artificial intelligence? And this is a very important question. You should know that what are those disciplines by which we can create, uh, from the contribution of which we can create AI-based machines? And let me tell you one fact that AI, artificial intelligence, is not just a part of computer science. You know one famous book in textbooks in computer uh, artificial intelligence by Elaine and Ries. And if you see their details, you'll find that one professor is from psychology department, and other is from mathematics department, and one another or, uh, third or third term. He is a professor uh, in the IIT Guwahati. So they are from different disciplines. This means what? That is a very famous textbook. Okay. So this is not just a part of computer science. Let me tell you why. Because to create the AI, first we should know that how intelligence is composed. As you know, the intelligence is an intangible part of our brain. That part which you cannot touch, of course. And that is a combination of reasoning, learning, problem solving perception, okay, and language understanding. These this, this different factors, of course, you cannot say they are coming from one discipline. So, to achieve these factors, AI requires the help or contribution from this discipline, like mathematics, biology, psychology, sociology, computer science, neuron study, and statistics. Okay, these are few. I'm not citing all the this important all the disciplines, of course. These are the important disciplines. So look at this figure. This is the artificial intelligence, and we are this particular circle is touching all the others, this is computer science, psychology, neuron science, biology, philosophy, math. So from all these disciplines contributions, we'll able to build our AI based system. Clear. So we need contribution from these different disciplines. So just to state that AI is a part of computer science, you can say like that, but you cannot say that AI is only the part of computer science. You cannot say like that. Okay. Clear? Now I'm coming to next important fact that is very important. And guys, if you uh, mention, whenever I say something important, you can take a screenshot of the, the same because in the, uh, after the meeting, that will help you to analyze these facts. Okay, so this fact is very important. So what is the difference that exists between, uh, you know, programming with AI and programming without AI? Programming without AI are those programs which can answer only specific questions it is meant to solve. Clear. Uh, someone said screen not visible. Uh, is my sc uh, sc uh, screen visible to all of you now? Visible, no? Oh, sorry. <coughs> so you see that programming without AI is meant to solve only specific questions. Okay. So I am bolding this term, I'm putting this term specific in bold. That is very important. But programming with AI are those programs which can answer generic questions. And generic means in general nature. This may not be clear to you. Let me give you one example. Okay. Suppose you know, you, uh, I hope you know that quadratic equation. Yes or no? So quadratic equations, where you'll see the power of x is in 2. So we can design a program, 
if without AI to solve that quadratic equation. For that, we need to find out only the value of b square minus 4 if I am considering the equation as ax square plus bx plus c equal to 0. I hope you all know this. I'm not going to discuss in detail. But just to mean, say, mean to you that that quadratic equation can be solved with that program accurately. Yes, it is OK. But what happens if you input a cubic equation, that is meant equation with x power t, and then what happens uh, for an equation where x power is suppose 27? Can, it, can that program solve that? No, because that program is specifically designed to solve a quadratic equation. So it cannot adopt new ones. That is the case without AI. Means that is a program without AI. But programming with AI, as you see that, it can answer generic questions. So it will be designed in such a way that it can adopt any new equations. Means you can put either quadratic equation, cubic equation, or whatever the powers of x, it can easily solve it. Clear? So that is just an example to show you the difference between these two terms, specific and generic. Got it? So programming without AI targets specific, programming with AI targets generic. Now, second thing is that modification in the program leads to change in structure with respect to programming without AI. Of course, because suppose you want that equation to solve cubic equation, you need to join another part, you need to change the structure, and that will be not so easy and not so quick. It will take time, of course, and sometimes it may lead to affecting the program adversely. Clear? Because they are not independent, you need to change the whole structure. But AI-based program can absorb new modification by putting highly independent pieces of information together. So say you have T independent space like T1, T2, T3. T. So as part of the new environment, users need to change T2, then they only change the T2. So you don't need to change the overall structure. And with easy and quick way, you can perform that modification. So programming with AI, modification is quite easy and quick. And obviously, it can solve any generic question. So these are the differences between programming with AI and programming without AI. I hope this is clear to you. Now, coming to the next part, you see that while um, giving the introduction of John McCarthy, I have used the term Turing. Although this is not a part, but I am including this in my lecture because this is very important. All of you should know about Turing test. So what is Turing test? Turing test is designed by, actually is created or developed by Alan Turing, who, is a, who was a famous mathematician and computer scientist. And this Turing test is used to detect whether or not computers can think intelligently like humans. Well, look at this figure. This figure will tell you everything about the Turing test. See, there are three players here. Player A, player B, and one other player, that is player C, that will be interrogator, who will ask the questions. And the question will be part like that. It can detect whether the player A is a human being or a computer. Clear? So let me give you an example. Suppose interrogator player C asks a question, multiply 20 to the power 40 into 37 to the power 50. 20 to the power 40 into 37 to the power 50. As a human being, can you solve it within two or three seconds, or I can say within microsecond, can you solve it? In my case, I can't. And I suppose that you also know if you are not a superhuman being, okay? So, but if you are a machine, if it is a machine, it can solve it within one second, isn't it? So that's the why that player C, that interrogator is asking such question to multiply such big numbers. But what happens if this is intelligent machine? Then 
it will pause for some time and it will give you a wrong answer. Can you guess why it is uh, giving such wrong answer? Because in that way, it can mimic a human being. Because if it gives the wrong answer by processing for some moments, then it means that it is a human being. If it is, because if it is a machine, it can solve it within one second, isn't it? So if it gives or if it behaves like that, it means it success to it success to mimic like a human being. Got it? So that is how we can actually detect whether a machine is intelligent or can think intelligently. This is the Turing test. Now I hope this is clear to you. Clear. So coming to the next part, that is also very important, that is types of artificial intelligence. And here I will discuss type 1 and type 2 AI with their different types. Let me show you one figure. And please pardon me because uh, I have designed, I have drawn this figure by myself. So maybe my drawing is not so perfect, but I think I'll be able to depict the uh, concept behind it correctly. Okay. So see, you can take a screenshot of this. Type 1 and type 2. Type 1 means those AI classification based on capabilities. Okay. Capability or, or capable means what? Ability to perform some tasks. Is it it? So type 1 is classified only on based on the capabilities. And under type 1, we have different AIs like narrow AI, general AI, and strong AI. And type 2 is based on functionality, means how actually it works, how it actually functions. So under type 2, we have reactive machines, limited memory, theory of mind, self-awareness. So let's discuss each of them in details. So first, coming to type 1, based capability, the, the type one that is based on capabilities, and the first one is the weak AI or narrow. Although you see the term is like weak AI or narrow AI, but you see this is the most common and currently available AI. Okay, and that is able to perform a dedicated task with intelligence. But why the term weak here? Or why the term narrow here? Because it is only trained for one specific task and it cannot perform beyond its field or limitations. So it is termed as weak AI. Okay, so just to clarify you, say playing says, I have designed an AI system to play says. Then it may not be able to perform another tasks like purchasing suggestions on e-commerce sites or self-driving cars, isn't it? So it is dedicated to one specific task. That's why weak AI or narrow AI. So examples already you got it, that is playing says, Purchasing suggestion on e-commerce sites, self-driving cars, speech recognition, image recognitions. These are the different narrow AI-based applications. And one real-time application uh, is IBM's Watson supercomputer, which uses an expert system approach combined with machine learning and natural language processing. Then we have Apple series. Okay, that is the virtual assistant. So these are coming under weak AI or narrow AI. Yeah. Yeah. The next one is general AI. And this general AI can perform any intellectual tasks with efficiency like a human being. But up to now, there is no such system exists which could come under general AI or can perform any task as perfect as human being. So it means we can't develop Till now, we can't develop any such systems which have emotions and feelings like we human beings have to perform a specific task. So general AI. Then we have super AI. From the term, it is very clear that this can perform any task better than human with cognitive properties. So this level of intelligence of system at which these machines could surpass human intelligence. And you know, for that, we, have, we should have employed the characteristics like the ability to think, to reason, to solve the puzzle, 
to make judgments, plan, learn, communicate by its own. So these characteristics should be employed properly. But again, it is a hypothetical concept of artificial intelligence, and research is going on in this. So these three types are clear to you now. Now I am coming to type two. So this is based on functionality. The first one is reactive machines. And these reactive machines are those AI systems which do not store memories or past experiences for future actions. Okay, it is not storing actually past experiences. It is focusing only on the current scenarios and react on it as part of this principle action is concerned. Okay, so the, these are reactive machines and famous examples like, you know, IBM's do Deep Blue system. You, I hope you have already, uh, you have already known about this uh, software, which is used for this flying system. Then we have Google's AlphaGo. This one is, of course, very famous because it is able to defeat the world champion in the game of Go. Okay, so these are the reactive machines. Then we have limited memory. And from the time, it is very clear that limited. This means it can store past experiences or some data for a short period of time. As for example, self-driving car. Okay, these cars can store recent speed of nearby cars, the distance of other cars, speed limit, and other information that will help it to navigate the road properly, thereby preventing itself from meeting any unfortunate accidents. So self-driving car is the current day's buzzword. I'll discuss more about it in detail later sure. of this lecture. So this comes under limited memory. Clear. The next is theory of mind. And this theory of mind-based AI has the ability to understand the human emotions, beliefs, and be able to interact socially like human beings. But again, these, the research is going on, and they are not still developed. We have uh, been working on this area, but currently we don't have any such machine which have emotions and feelings like we do humans have. Okay, then the next one is uh, self-awareness, and this can be termed as the future of artificial intelligence. Why? Because these systems, these machines, will be super intelligent and possesses their own consciousness, sentiments, and self-awareness, and they will be smarter than human beings. So again, this is a hypothetical concept, like we have discussed in the case of type 1, super AI. Clear? So I hope this type 1 and type 2 AI are now clear to you. So I'm coming to one question. Please pardon with that because I just want to check whether you guys are attending seriously or not. So my question is that Google's AlphaGo falls under option A, reactive machines, option B, theory of mind. You just need to respond by either A option or option B. Okay, so please respond it. I am pausing for 15 seconds, then please type your answer. B. Please mute yourself. Please use the chat option, okay? Well, guys, um, getting at least 80%, oh, sorry, 90% correct answer, but only 10% wrong answer. But don't mind, because this Google's AlphaGo, remember when I was discussing about reactive machines, means those machines which do not store, see, I'm keeping it in bold and caps. That is very important, okay? These reactive machines do not store memories or past experiences for future action. 
clear then google alpha go google's alpha go is one such system so option a is the correct answer so who have selected or who have chosen this option o we are very much correct thank you for your answer well then i'm coming to the last part of this session that is different applications of ai okay so look at this figure you'll see that almost all the areas are being now covered for this ai uh, see astronomy healthcare transport agriculture education e-commerce entertainment robotics automotive social media data security finance gaming so these all areas where we are applying ai based system but it would be not it not be possible to consider all the areas so i'm going to cite some important areas so let's discuss that so first one is agriculture and why i have selected agriculture i hope you all know that india is an agriculture based country so agriculture is plays vital role in the economy of india so that's why i'm considering this as a first one let me tell you one fact as an alarming fact the world will need to produce 50% more food by 2050 because we are literally eating up everything what does it mean this means that the growth rate of population is so high that by 2050 50% more food will be needed how is it possible that because our land is not growing although the population is growing so the only way this can be possible if we use our resources more efficiently and more carefully and that is possible only through the use of ai because ai can help farmers to get more from the land while using resources for sustainable and see believe me this is not an imaginary concept because this has been already been means you know uh, employed see see and spray see and spray this is a famous term nowadays blue river technologies develop an ai based system that is see and spray which uses computer vision technologies like object detection to monitor and precisely spray with its eyes on cotton plants so what does it mean you know from the term see and spray guys let me tell you one fact in our csit the terms are so good that from the term itself we can guess what actually it does for us see and spray first it will observe it will detect those plants which which being infected and accordingly it will spray only to that those those plants which are being infected so that way we can save a lot of waste right isn't it lot of resources will be saved for that way so that area that technique is being used for the chi and spray for that we are using some computer vision techniques and computer vision techniques let me tell you one line about that computer vision uses different image processing technique to design so those devices which will be able to detect objects in a particular image or classify it or segment it okay so that more accurately we can analyze that so that is computer vision again a part of artificial intelligence so that technology is being used in see and spray similarly one more example plantics developed by pit which is a berlin based company and it identifies potential defects and nutrient defense deficiencies in the soil through image again computer vision technique is employed here okay so i'll show you some videos Uh, at least about the sea and spray in the the last part of this lecture okay and that videos are very interesting that will show you how this actually means sea and spray working okay so we have seen the application of ai in agriculture let's move to the next one next one is marketing so marketing means what you know the word marketing marketing is the way to sugar coat your products to attract more customer in hindi we used to say like that makhan lagana what does it does it means that by some way you try to attract more and more customers towards your product is it 
So, the same thing is happening. Would, uh, guys, please mute yourself. So, okay. the same thing is happening. Would, uh, guys, please uh, mute yourself. Okay. Some voices uh, are coming. Some voices <laughs> are coming. So, you know Netflix. I hope you guys are all aware with this Netflix. At least for once, you have used this Netflix during this lockdown period. Even myself used this, although this is not a good thing, isn't it? So Netflix, where we used, to, we used to watch series or movies, what it actually does. Suppose today you have seen one movie that is of type thriller. But tomorrow you will see that some more movies of that type, thriller, will be suggested to you from the Netflix. Isn't it? So that way actually Netflix is trying to selling its products. That way actually how the Netflix is marketing, isn't it? Similarly say, you have watched one movie from Tom Cruise. Tomorrow you will see that more movies from uh, where Tom Cruise is acting being suggested to you by Netflix. That is again a marketing, my dear friends. And that is done through AI-based app or system. And how it works actually? It examines millions of records to suggest shows and films that you might like based on your previous actions and choices of film. I just cited that thriller word. So that may be taken or considered as your reaction towards a film, and that will be used tomorrow to suggest more films like that. Okay. And when the data set grows, this technology is getting smarter and smarter every day. So Netflix, I think, is a very good example of AI application in market. Clear? So coming to the next one, that is banking. And you will surprise to see that AI in banking is growing faster than you thought. I hope you all know about HDFC Bank. Yes? Or no? I suppose yes. So HDFC Bank has already developed an AI-based chatbot that is known as EVA. EVA stands for Electronic Virtual Assistant, and that is being built by Bengaluru-based Sansport AI Research. What it actually does? Say, as a human being, you can talk with at most 100 customers one day, isn't it? Also, you may not be able to answer all the questions they are asking to you. But there is no such limitation in case of AI, this app that is EVA. And since its launch, EVA has addressed over 3 million customer queries, interacted with over half a million unique users, and held over a million conversations. So it can collect knowledge from thousands of sources and provide simple answers within 0 0.4 seconds. So you have already got the differences and the importance of this AI-based virtual assistant. I think I don't need to explain it further. So that's why we are using, these banks are using AI-based chatbot. And have you heard about Clara? Yes or no? No, sir. Uh, so do some search. You know this this current pandemic uh, session means uh, this current uh, COVID nineteen. Clara is being developed as a virtual assistant to check the symptoms for the first time actually. And now up to now, different many other uh, virtual assistants being developed. The Clara, Clara is the first one being developed to check the COVID nineteen symptoms. Okay. So that is one more example. So don't worry I, about the EVA. I'll show you a video after this uh, lecture. Okay. So let me finish the theoretical portion now. Then you have seen the banking application now. One more thing is that AI-based techniques can be used to detect fraud also. And MasterCards, RBS, WorldPay, they have already relied on AI and deep learning to detect fraudulent transaction patterns and prevent card fraud for years now. Okay, so they have successfully employed them. Again, you have seen one more term that is deep learning here. Deep learning, uh, I think I have one more session in, on machine learning. I'll discuss in detail in that session. But 
let me give you a brief introduction. Deep learning can consider as a bunch of neural network, which is a subset. Actually, deep learning as a whole is a subset of machine learning. Okay. Machine learning as a whole is a subset of artificial intelligence. You just see that from the history records that from the 1955 onwards, we have the term AI grown. Okay. Then from the 1970 onwards, we have ML. Then from 2010 onwards, we have deep learning growing. So deep learning, again, a subset of machine learning, and this is being currently used in more and more areas because its efficiency and accuracy is more with respect to if you compare to other approaches. Only difficulty is that it is more complex. Your system configuration should be high to employ this type of application. Clear? So banking is clear. Now coming to the next one, that is finance. And in case of finance, one important task is the future pattern detection in the market, whether it is a stock market or whatever it is. But for that, you should able to mining the data, that is data mining, the best amount of data accurately. And for that, machines are great because they can crunch a huge amount of data in short span. Machines can also learn to observe patterns in past data and predict how these patterns might repeat in the future. Suppose today's data or last week's data. From the last week's data and today's data, it can predict about the tomorrow's uh, stock prediction. Okay. And in that way, these areas are growing. And you know, Namura Securities, one Japan's leading firm, already employed this and got so, popular, so much popularity in this. Okay, so Nomura is set to introduce a new stock trading system. So that is the AI application in finance. Then, healthcare. And you know that in case of healthcare, already a lot of expert systems being developed to diagnose uh, different uh, diseases. Okay, different diseases accurately and with less period of time. And let me give you some real-time examples. You know, one organization, Cambio Healthcare, Cambio Healthcare, they develop a clinical decision support system for stroke prevention that can give the physician a warning when there is a patient at risk of having a star a heart stroke. So this is very important, isn't it? Similarly, we have Coela Life, and this company has digitalized a device that can find cardiac diseases. Similarly, this one, Aflo. I'm putting it in red because this is very important and popular nowadays. The kind of uh, rich watch in this system, keeping track of how people are doing in nursing homes, home care. And what is the best thing about AI is that you don't even need to develop a new medication. Just by using an existing medication in the right way, you can also save lives. Clear? So I'll show you the application here, uh, uh, in the uh, the last part of the lecture, don't worry about that. Then, next thing is the gaming. And in case of gaming, artificial intelligence has become an integral part. In fact, this is one of the biggest accomplishments of AI in the game industry. Guys, this meeting is going to end in five minutes. You don't need to worry about, you will be provided a separate link or the same. if the same link works, you can join for the same link. If it's not going to work, then I'll Provide, we will provide you a next link in the group. You can join through that. Okay. So in case of gaming, I have already cited one example that is AlphaGo. Why it is this famous? Because this AlphaGo software, which is designed for playing this Go game, even it has defeated Lee Seidel, which is the who is the world champion in this game. So. This AlphaGo can be considered as the most significant accomplishment of AI in the field of gaming. Next one example is Fear. And this game, I hope probably most of you already played. This Fear stands for First Encounter Assault Recon. Okay, so why this is so special? Or what is the speciality about this game? Because the actions taken by the opponent AI in this game are unpredictable. 
since the game is designed in such a way that opponents are trained throughout the game and we are never going to repeat the same mistakes. Let me tell you one example. Suppose you have killed one opponent, the X, by hiding by the door. You have shot that opponent X by hiding by the door. But this thing, this trick, now being realized and adopted by the opponent, means to say that in the next case, when you are going to apply the same trick, you will hide by the door and you are going to choke the opponent, then that is not going to work. So you have to adopt a new trick every, in, means in every new cases. So what happens then? These games become harder and harder as soon as you are playing it. Okay, and this makes the game very challenging and prompts the players to constantly switch strategies. Obviously, you need to change the strategies and never sit in the, in, sit in the same position. So that's why this fear game is very interesting and very challenging. And so these are the applications of AI in gaming. I hope this is clear to you. Well, then moving to the next one, that is space exploration. Space exploration, you know about NASA, you know about ISRO, okay. So space expeditions and discoveries always require analyzing vast amount of data. And this vast amount of data, this huge amount of data, we human beings cannot analyze it. Or we can analyze it, but it takes a lot of time. So artificial intelligence and machine learning is the best way to handle and process data on this scale. Let me give you one real, one recent example that is NASA's next rover mission to Mars, which is the Mars 2020 rover. Even I will show you the video of the same. Okay, this Mars 2020 rover is an AI based rover. Okay, and this rover is responsible for autonomous targeting of cameras. Whenever it detects some object in front of it, suppose say a rock, a particular rock in front of it, it will automatically target that rock and capture the images of it and send it to you. So AI-based, deep learning based techniques are employed here. So with that, it can automat uh, automatically target the cameras in order to perform the investigation on Mars. Obviously this sounds interesting, isn't it? So that's how the AI is being used in space exploration. And next, autonomous vehicles. And this is also one interesting area. I hope you have already know, know about the self-driving cars or self-driving bike, isn't it? This becomes a buzzword in the AI industry. Since Waymo, a company that already launched some autonomous vehicles or some self-driving cars, that is driverless cars, okay, where you just need to put your destination, you will be it's brought to that location, to the destination, without facing some unfortunate accidents. And how it works actually? The AI system collects data from the vehicle's radar, cameras, GPS, and cloud services to produce control signals that operate the vehicle. Okay, and for that, obviously, again, we are using deep learning algorithms.